I actually don't have any material on them, but I know that we're learning ellipses, and well, I don't have anything I can give you about I can give you a lot. Let's start with the general formula. That's always where you want to start in math. You know the general formula of an ellipse? I actually do not. Okay. When you take your test, do they give you a sheet that lets you make notes? Um, but yeah, you can, but sometimes he actually writes down the formula for us. All right. If it's a complicated one. Oh, it's no big deal that you don't know this. Yeah. Really. He would give this to you? Yeah, probably. Because if there's, uh, yeah, I'm surprised at that, actually. There's only four conic sections. There are parabolas, ellipses, circles, and hyperbolas. And each uh -huh. one has its own general formula. Okay? Uh -huh. What I just wrote there was the general formula for a horizontal ellipse. Uh -huh. If I have a vertical ellipse then the a squared comes under the y term. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's, it switches instead of being well, wide. And the it's, is, well. Yeah, the reason is the a is measured, it's kind of like the large radius. Uh -huh. Well, in the top ellipse, it's measured horizontally along the x-axis, whereas in the bottom ellipse, it's measured from here to there, vertically, in other words, that's A in the bottom ellipse, that's A in the top ellipse. In the uh -huh. top ellipse, that's B, and in the bottom ellipse, that's B. So okay. the one thing to really remember about ellipses is that A is always greater than B, always. Okay. So if they give you an equation such as x minus 2 squared, over 4 plus y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. What kind of an ellipse is that? Horizontal or vertical? Uh, that is, one second, it is, I'm not sure. Which, which denominator is bigger? That's what you want to ask. You oh, no, it's bigger. The nine, the y is, so it would be, right. it would be a horrid, wait. It would be a vertical ellipse. Yeah, vertical, that's what I meant, yeah. In other words, this is a squared, that's a squared, that's b squared. Because a is always bigger than b. If a is always bigger than b, then a squared is always bigger than b squared. So is all you have to do is look at the denominator, determine which is bigger, and if it's under the y, it's a vertical ellipse. If it's under the x, it's a horizontal ellipse. Yeah. Now, that's not all there is to know about ellipses. Uh, let me, oh, and going, this ellipse that I wrote up here, where's the center of that ellipse? The center? Uh-huh. Um, that point right there, where is that? That is at uh, the origin? So 2 comma 3. Oh, uh, okay. That's what H and K are. Oh, okay. This is the center yeah. of the ellipse. So if they give you this equation as an equation of an ellipse, well, you know that it has an h of 2, its x center, its y center is 3, its a is 3, and its b is 2. So if I go over on this picture I've drawn over here, and I say, okay, that center is at 2 comma 3, well, now I know where that top vertex is. Since A is 3, that vertex has to be at 2 comma 6. This vertex has to be at 2 comma 0. What's the coordinates on that vertex and that vertex? Uh, oops. Uh, I'm 
China, okay. The co the coordinates of those two vertexes you um, marked. Start with the center and figure out what B is. Well, B would be. Is it? Is B three? Oh, huh? remember A is always larger than B. So oh, A is larger than B. B. Is okay, so B is two. Three, so B is two, which makes this point zero comma three. Yeah. It makes this point over here four comma three. So we found the five most important points of an ellipse, which are the center and the major vertices and the minor vertices. Uh -huh. Now, there's two more points that are actually more important, and that's the foci. You've talked foci before? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me erase these general formulas. And there is a formula for ellipses that goes like this. A lot like the Pythagorean theorem, only it's subtraction instead of addition. So if I want to know what C is, it's the square root of A squared minus B squared. So in this case, it's the square root of 9 minus 4. So C would be the square root of 5. Uh-huh. Now, what C is, is the distance from the center to the foci. In other words, that distance there is root 5. Going up and also going down. That distance is also root 5. So, uh -huh. what is the coordinates on the top foci? I... The, the center is 2 comma 3. Yeah. So what's the coordinates if I go north by root 5? Um, it would be, if you go north, then you'd increase the y by root 5. So it would so. be 2, 3 plus root 5. And that is the way to write it, incidentally. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then the south foci would be uh, 2 comma, comma 3, three minus, minus. Three. Yeah, minus. Yeah, okay. So now I know all seven points. And there's nothing else to know with an ellipse. Seven points is everything. Now, let's talk about why C is important. There's my, on the left here, I've drawn uh -huh. a horizontal ellipse, but it doesn't matter when you're talking about what C means. C means that if you send a straight line, it will reflect to the other foci no matter where you send it. If I send a straight line there, it reflects to the other foci. I send a straight line there, it reflects to the other foci. Think of a skating rink designed in an elliptical matter like this. Yeah. And you're at one foci with a hockey puck and a tennis ball. And you fire that tennis ball at the side of the skating rink. It always, no matter where you aim it, it always reflects to the other foci. True thing. It's a magical property almost. This happens in real life? Yep. It's the property of ellipses. That's why the foci are so important. That's really interesting. Especially since the solar system, all of the planets orbit the sun in an elliptical manner with the sun being at the foci. The sun is right there. And we, or any other planet, Earth, is 
on the border of the ellipse surrounding. But it doesn't go in a circular pattern about the sun. It goes in an elliptical pattern. And the moon goes in an elliptical pattern about the earth. And Mars goes in an elliptical pattern about the sun. So it turns out that when you want to come up with the mathematics of describing our solar system, turns out the best way is to use polar representation of conics and make the origin of the conic the sun, believe it or not. When you do that, you get the simplest mathematical description of the solar sun. And it's not simple. You've got to get to calculus first before you can even learn what it is. But that's what they do. Uh -huh. And all of the planets follow elliptical patterns. And one of the foci is the heavy object, like the sun. What, whatever is being orbited is at the foci of that ellipse. Uh-huh. Right. Let's, let's do one more, and I'm going to try to see if I can even, like... Well, I might have to go to my book to get a problem. Cause yeah, sure. Why not? Let me do that. Um, making up one on the top of my head, there's so many different problems that you can make up. Uh, i got to find conics in this book. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, let me give you a problem that they typically give. Here's one. X plus 5 squared plus 4, oops, hold on, or times Y minus 4 squared equals 16. And what they want you to do is come up with the equation of the ellipse. We don't quite have it yet. There's got to get it in standard format. And yeah. then find its center, its foci, and the vertices, which is all seven points. Okay. Um. So first of all, how do we get it in standard format? Well, they're supposed to have denominators. Exactly. But, so most them. importantly, on the right side, it's got to be 1. Yeah. So what's the first thing to do? Minus 15, I guess. Where are you getting 15? Ah, you're trying to make the right side 1. That's not the way to make the right side 1. The way to okay, make wait. The right oh, wait, divide, wait, divide, divide by 4? 16. So I'm dividing 16. that by 16, I'm dividing that by 16, I'm dividing that by 16. Now what we have is x plus 5 squared. Eh, let me, instead of rewriting everything, let me just do this. You with me? Yeah, so far. Okay. Now tell me what... Tell me, first of all, if it's a vertical or a horizontal ellipse, where's the center, and what's A and what's B? It's horizontal. Okay. The center is at minus 5, comma, positive 4. Good. Um, and what is what was the other thing you asked? A and B. A and B are uh, six, A is 16 and B oh, is 4. That's A squared. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, 
it is four, and then B is two. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now we know how to draw it. I'll go to the center, minus five, four. I'll draw an ellipse, a horizontal one. I don't, Do really, care. I don't really yeah. care if I'm drawing it accurately or not. Because it's not the scale. No. It, well, it's not a question of whether it's the scale. It's a question of does it go to the right or the y-axis or not. I don't care yet. Okay? I'll, I'll show you. I'll explain. Okay. I know this distance is what? That is uh, A. What is A? Wait. Six. Wait, is it four or is it 16? It's four, yeah. Four. Four. B is and then that is two. Okay. So now that allows me to calculate that vertice, that vertice, that vertice, and that vertice. Got the center. So the only thing I need to figure out is C. In other words, I want to know where the foci are. That foci and that foci. Isn't it just half the distance? No, no it's not. It's, it's oh yeah, it's that, C. It's the theorem. It's the formula. Yeah, the C squared. Not the, it's not the Pythagorean theorem. It's a yeah, it's alteration the, of it. So it's yeah. So A okay. squared while minus B we're, squared. While we're talking about that, just momentarily, let's talk about a hyperbola. Hyperbola is pretty similar, except it's this. So the hyperbola is exactly the Pythagorean theorem. Uh -huh. In terms of relating C to A and B. Okay. But that's only for a hyperbola. For an ellipse, mm -hmm. it's backwards. It's opposite. And uh -huh. the way you can kind of remember this is that if you try to solve for C, you're going to get the square root of A squared minus B squared. Notice that A squared better be bigger than B squared or I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative number. Yeah. So this is kind of a reminder if you're dealing with ellipses and you come up with a C that's the square root of a negative number, you got your A and your B backwards. Uh -huh. In other words, A has to be bigger than B. Whereas with a hyperbola, I would end up with this. And A does not have to be bigger than B. You can have any relationship between A and B. Mm -hmm. So it's only with an ellipse that A has to be bigger than B. And here I would solve and get square root of 12 or so, 2 root 3. That's what C is. So tell me what that foci's coordinates are. Uh negative 5 plus 2 root 3, and then negative 5 minus 2. Hold on. Two root it's, that's the x-coordinate. Yeah. y-coordinate is 4. Oh, the y-coordinate is, yeah, 4. Yeah. Okay. And the only reason I mention that is that this is a bit of a strange-looking answer. In other words, it's not often that you have two numbers involved when you're talking about a specific coordinate. But... You do when you have irrational numbers. You don't really, you could turn that into a number, but it would no longer be exact. So if you want the most exact answer, you got to write it as minus 5 plus 2 root 3. There's no answer that's more exact than that. Uh -huh. Now we have all seven points. That's all they ask for. That's really all they can ask for. That's pretty easy, actually. Nothing more beyond those seven points. There is actually something called eccentricity, but I doubt that you probably study, have studied it or will study it even. Yeah. This is pretty easy, it seems. Yeah, it's not bad. It's all about memorizing, you know the, formula. It's all about yeah. memorizing the general formula. Now, let me just speak to that for, we got seven minutes. Let's just talk about that. 
because the difference between a hyperbola and an ellipse is not that much. It's a minus sign. In other words, sometimes I just don't get technology. My eraser does not want to erase the last part of this. There. It's really hard. Okay. Now, Bill doesn't want to go. Ignore that part right there. Okay. The difference between an ellipse like that and a hyperbola. That is freaky. Uh, a hyperbola over here on the left that looks like that is a minus sign. If I change that plus sign to a minus sign, I'm looking at hyperbolas. With me? Yeah. That's all I got to do. Now, if I want to look at a vertical hyperbola, then I put the minus sign in front of the X and not the Y. In other words, a vertical hyperbola might be something like this. And when I don't have an H and a K, that just means that it's at the origin. But that would be a vertical hyperbola like this. This would be a horizontal hyperbola, and the only difference is the X is, the negative sign is in front of the Y term over here. So that's a horizontal hyperbola. This up in the upper right is a vertical hyperbola. Notice there's not much difference between them. It's just where the negative sign is in front. Which, which variable is the negative sign in front of? Mm -hmm. And you can't tell where A and B is by the size of them. By immediately looking at that, I can't tell which is A and which is B. What I have to know is whether it's a horizontal or a vertical. In other words, A is always measured along the major transverse axis. So that's A right there on the lower left. Mm -hmm. And up here, A is from there to there. That's A. So on the lower left, this is A squared, 16. And on the upper right, that's A squared. Mm -hmm. The thing that's under the Y term. And what A and B are with a high, have you, you haven't had hyperbolas at all? Not hyperbolas, I've had per, no, uh, parabolas. I've had, but I don't know if you'll get, surely you'll get to it before the end of the year. It, well, I got like a week left. But. I don't know, I wouldn't think though they would start conic sections without being able to finish it, but maybe. But anyway, B is that distance from there to there, and that's an imaginary box. You don't actually see that box when you're looking at a hyperbola. In other words, if I look down here on the left, I don't see any box. But the way this hyperbola is constructed is by starting with an imaginary rectangle, drawing the diagonals of that rectangle, and your hyperbola is asymptotic to those diagonals. You know what I mean by that, right? In other words, it approaches those diagonals as I go out, never quite touching them. Mm -hmm. So when you're graphing a hyperbola, you graph the box first. Then you draw the diagonals, and then you draw the hyperbola relative to those diagonals. And this point here and that point there. In other words, your vertex needs to be tangent to that box. Uh -huh. 
And that's really, uh, hyperbolas tend to be a little harder to deal with than ellipses, but conceptually the only difference is that negative sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, hyperbolas also have a very interesting reflective property. You start at one focus and you shoot a ball uh, think for a minute I got to remember the reflective property on hyperbolas it's similar to ellipses I'm, I, I can't remember exactly how it works but when you build a telescope you will frequently have a parabolic surface an elliptical surface and a hyperbolic surface in the same telescope to reflect the light coming in to your eyeball. Uh-huh. All par parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas all have really fascinating reflective properties that make them very useful in all kinds of applications. If you build a flashlight, they're always in the shape of a parabola. Yeah. Why? Because the light bulb is put right where the focus is, which means so reflects. light emanating from the light bulb gets reflected off of the parabolic surface and goes out in a straight line. Mm -hmm. So you focus the path of the light waves. Oh, speaking of this, let, let you be the first person I've recommended this show to, best show I've ever seen on TV called Genius on National Geographic. It's a series. It's about okay. Einstein's young wife, his young life, Einstein. Yeah. It literally had me crying today because today's episode was the year that he wrote his three famous papers and mm -hmm. all of his professors told him he was stupid. He didn't know what he was talking about. He was just a patent clerk, and of course he wins the Nobel Prize for two of them. But um, fascinating series. If mm -hmm. you like science at all, start watching it and watch it from the first episode. They're on like episode five or six now, mm -hmm. but really, really good. Called Genius. Okay. On National Geographic. I check it out if I get the time. Yeah, if you're, like I said, I know you're a science fan, um, so you would enjoy it for sure. Okay, well, I guess that wraps it up for today. All right. Talk to you later. Come on, Mr. John. Have a good uh, weekend.